And in the meantime, I would like to here announce uh, our next demonstrator, Damien Stewart, uh, who has a background in architecture and music and professionally worked as a programmer on interactive installations for museums uh, and on game titles for the Sony PlayStation. Um, as an artist, he combines this, this experience to create interactive installations based on code, uh, sound, light, and electronics. And the project that Damien will demonstrate here tonight is called the Artvertiser and was initiated by Julian Oliver and realized in collaboration with Clara Bosch and Diego Diaz, uh, besides Damien's own involvement, of course. The floor is yours. Um, uh, thanks, Michelle, and thanks for, uh, thanks for inviting me here. It's, it's really nice to be here. Um, so this is the Advertiser Billboard Interception Unit Version 1. Um, it's a handheld augmented reality system that uh, repurposes street advertisements as a surface for the exhibition of artworks. So what that means is that you carry this around in the street and then when there's a billboard, uh, when, you look through, when you look through the binoculars, you see artworks in place of the advertisements. So um, what we're trying to do with this is really um, think about this city, think about advertisements in the city as a kind of a read-only media that have been forced on us by corporate interests. And what this device enables us to do is really uh, turn them back into a read-write media. So we can, uh, we can take these advertisements and we can remove them, and we can replace them, we can comment on them. So in a way, it is an augmented reality project, but it has as much in common with augmented reality as it has with the ad-busting movement, which is about uh, taking billboards and augmenting them on an analog way, changing the message and uh, really making them mean different things. Uh, yeah, so uh, as Michelle mentioned, the project was initiated by Julian Oliver in uh, February 2008. And uh, this particular, this binoculars here have been developed uh, with myself in collaboration with uh, Clara Bosch and Diego Diaz, uh, with funding support from the Matadero, I think it's called, in Madrid. Um, yeah, so in fact, the advertiser platform is much larger than just the binoculars. This is this is the most real part of it at the moment. But the plan in the future, as well, is to have uh, have the same software running on this, uh, running on laptops, running on mobile phones, so that you can really uh, go out into the, into your city and make it your city, and uh, yeah, just really interact with the media in your own way. Um, yeah, so. So we're really hoping in the future to have some sort of a web interface with this where you can uh, select advertisements that you want to have replaced and upload replacement images and then share them with anyone else who's running the advertiser system so that they also can, uh, can experience the world the way you'd like to have them experience the world rather than the way the people who've bought the advertisements would like you to experience it. Um, so this is inside here. There's actually a little Linux computer and a webcam and a pair of uh, sort of stereo, um, I suppose, uh, little mini screens. And this is running a open source system called Bazaar, which does, uh, uh, it's called markerless feature tracking, which is a kind of augmented reality that doesn't use those ugly fiducial markers, uh, which is nice. Um, yeah, and so this is, this is one stream. There's another stream of the project which is about uh, taking archival footage, so taking Hollywood films, for example, that are full of commercial messages, and actually replacing the commercial messages with uh, messages of our own or message of messages of our users or our collaborators, and then uploading the, the films, the augmented films, uploading them back to video sharing sites or seeding them as torrents and making available these films that are free of commercial sponsorship in a kind of a covert way. Um, yeah, so that's another sort of angle on the project. And a third one, which is in development with uh, Julian Oliver and Dania Vasiliak, I think his name is, who's uh, actually involved in the Modder Lab here in Rotterdam. And that is to set up a man in the middle kind of a networking exploit 
uh, where people will be watching YouTube videos and the YouTube videos are actually passing through the advertiser system and all of the commercial messages are being removed from them. And I don't even know it's happening. Sort of a man in the middle attack, which is quite nice. Um, uh, yeah. Yeah, that's, uh, I mean, that's more or less all there is to the project at the moment. We're, uh, it's open source. We're releasing the code fairly soon on Git. Um, we have to clean some things up and, and fix some things. Uh, it currently works on Linux, and there's a OS X port, which I just finished yesterday. And uh, we're hoping to have it work on next generation smartphones like the the uh, Android, and the, there's a couple of new Nokia ones that are coming out that we want to have it working on. And I mean, it it goes on into the future as well. I mean, we don't see this project as finishing anytime soon. It hopefully, as long as there is augmented reality, there'll be the advertiser, and there'll be really your ability to replace the world, replace the commercial messages in your world with messages of your own. So changing it from a read-only world to a read-write world. Um, yeah, reclaiming the kind of cognitive space of your city. Yeah. David, can I ask you a question? Because yeah. um, uh, I was looking at your project, and, and of course the, the replacing of, um, let's say, billboard advertisements, as we stuck up here for your uh, demo, um, is uh, with artworks, is kind of a noble cause. But I can also imagine that if, the thing falls into the wrong hands, let's say the, the commercial parties, it might work the other, the other way around. They will use it to, let's say, replace artworks for billboards. <laughs> sure, yeah, I mean, that's, that's, uh, that's certainly a possibility, and that's one thing we've actually been talking about is how we can release the software under a license which is actually restrictive enough to prevent people doing this, but we realize we can't do it. And we also kind of realize that maybe we don't necessarily want that, you know, maybe, Maybe it needs to be just released and people can use it how they use it. But this is already happening. I mean, uh, uh, Google has started selling advertisement places in Google Street View. So on there are billboards in Google Street View and you can pay money to Google and then they'll replace the, bill the billboards inside Street View with your advertisement. So you've got this kind of double layer of advertising. It's already going on. Yeah. So okay, and um, another thing. Uh, thought I had, it's, I, I'm not even sure if this is a question, but I was still thinking back to the to Alessandro's uh, presentation on spam and then thinking how it relates to your project. In a sense, this is also kind of filtering the spam out of our physical environment, but it has an extra. It replaces, uh, it re replaces this like unwanted message for a, a pleasant one. Do you think there would also be something uh, for our spam filters to do in the future? That would mean a, a lot of positive messages these days, right? Yeah, well, actually related to this topic, when one of the questions we had when we presented this at um, Transmedia Alla a few weeks ago, uh, someone was saying, well, if you're replacing commercial messages with artworks, what if the artworks are just as pervasive as the commercial messages? I mean, really, are you changing anything? And I suppose w one of the points is really um, to change what is currently read-only media, like when you go into a town square and you look around and you see and there's all these billboards, you have the impression you're in public space, but cognitively your, your brain is owned by the people who have paid for these messages. I mean, that's one of the ideas about this, is this is actually, uh, this, this is an interception unit. So it actually intercepts the photons. When they leave the billboard, they come through the advertiser and they're actually blocked at that point there and then they're replaced with something else. And that's the point, is to enable blocking. What you do with the blocking is then, and that's a whole other question. Okay. But yeah. I can, I can you all uh, look our way in disbelief about this, <laughs> this device now. But are there any, any questions? Huh? Well, I, I, th I think that the, the, the way to do this is to really try it out first, and, and I'm sure you'll have plenty of questions then. So uh, Damien, thank you for sure. the demonstration.